Welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is Banking Switch. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported the company so far. If you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us, keep up to date with our daily photos, and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving personalization options and exclusive colors on the website, or you can get a blank one on Amazon Prime. All right, so there's a lot of little details when you're starting a business that if you've never started a business before, you're not going to know. And nobody tells you about them. And it's kind of an issue that I think is just in general a problem. Um, And I'm working on solving that a little bit. I've been working on a course. We'll see if that actually ever happens. But in general, one of the things to note is you need to get your LLC filed with the state. Then you need to get a EIN number filed with the IRS. Then you need to take that EIN number, and when you go to the bank, you need to set up a business bank account using that EIN number. Now, when a lot of people start their businesses, they start them exactly like I did, which is you create a separate personal bank account. There's nothing wrong with doing that. A lot of times, if it's not like you're using it primarily for business purposes all the time, or if it's a relatively low amount of transactions, for the most part, it won't be problematic. However, it's best to start a business with a business bank account. So I didn't do that initially. I started it with a... uh, a BMO checking account and a BMO savings account that were specifically labeled for me as the business, but they weren't, they were, they were personal checking and bank accounts. And I loved using BMO. I was a huge fan of BMO. I had a great success with BMO and uh, I still use them for my personal banking. But what ended up happening was over the course of the last two years, we have grown quite a bit and BMO is looking at the transaction data that's going in and out of the account and they're calling me saying, mm, this is not a personal account. This should be a business account and um, you guys either need to switch or not. So I come from a small town. You'll see how this ties in in a second. I come from a small town with a couple of banks. I mean, Janesville's not that small town, but um, there were a couple of big banks and my family obviously lived in Janesville growing up and my parents worked and or, or they banked with a specific bank that they had used when they first came to town 30 years ago. And that bank had gone through a couple of acquisitions, and then that bank had become a BMO Harris Bank. Well, the personal banker that my parents had used, and who I was friends with and had worked with in the past, ended up going to one of their competitors called Johnson Bank. Uh, And I love that person, so I said, well, can you set me up with a business bank account at Johnson? And he said, He'd love to. And he helped me get it all set up. And then he helped me get a cash collateralized line of credit set up with at at the Johnson account. And and we've been talking for almost nine months at this point about moving all of the business banking to Johnson, right? Well, one of my goals for January was to get the bank stuff transitioned from the personal BMO accounts to the Johnson business bank accounts and to use Johnson primarily for all of our business banking in the appropriate fashion that a business of our, of our size should. And the advantage of, there is a lot of advantages to business accounts, right? Obviously when you're a small business and you're just starting and it's like just you by yourself, a personal account may work just fine. But for a business account, we can do things like ACH transfers, wire transfers, which we use to pay a lot of our vendors. Um, it allows you to have multiple users, like our accountants can go in our bank accounts just without me having to like give them a password or anything. They just can go on as a separate user. Same thing with Merrill. She can get on and create a separate user account. We can issue business debit cards that are to different people so that they can make purchases from the company. There's a lot of advantages to a business bank account. So we thought, well, we transfer it all over. We'll get it all squared away. It'll be all clean. It'll be all done through the business accounts. We won't have any kind of crossover. There won't be any personal accounts at all. It'll be all like that. and It'll be good. And last week we made the transition and I am already regretting it. Now, I don't know if this is just because it's a business account or if it's just Johnson or whatever the case may be, but the problem is when we used BMO, the money when we would transfer it from Square or PayPal, our payment providers, to our bank account, it would show up instantly. And I mean instantly. 
by the time I had left the PayPal app and went to the BMO app to get to the money, it was already there. Which, for any of you who've been a small business, having that kind of instant access to your funds is critical. Because you can be able to make payments instantly out of that same money. Which is super important. So I, not knowing that this would be an issue, switched all of our banking over to Johnson, went through all of the process of calling all of our vendors and getting them on the new cards that are specifically associated with that account, and got our payroll switched over to Johnson. And I realized this now, like this week, that when I make a payment out of PayPal to Johnson, it doesn't clear for days. So we'll have thousands of dollars just stranded in limbo for days. And that's a real problem. So I got to figure out what to do next. We need to have it as business accounts. They need to be business accounts. They have to be business accounts. This, we're too big of a company at this point to have them all continue to be personal accounts, you know, ad infinitum. And <clears throat> we need the ability to do ACH transfers. And frankly, we really like having that line of credit. But we can't keep doing this with Johnson because it's not going to, we can't, we need to have that access to that capital instantly. And so I'm trying to decide whether to go back to BMO, which I've known and loved and used, or whether we use this opportunity to shop around a little bit and find, see if there's a different company out there, a banking company that will give us better rates for our business than BMO. On the flip side, there's also the opportunity that I have to go back to one of the business bankers at BMO and say, hey, this is what we're getting from Johnson. Can you get us this? And see if they say yes. Not necessarily telling them at that point that I don't like Johnson, but, you know, they'll probably figure that out soon enough when we switch. But the hope is that if we can get into a different banking system that allows us to have that instant access to capital, we will be a lot better off. And I think why this matters most is... I don't think people, like, it's hard to realize this, but when you're a small business, cash flow is just everything. And what is cash flow, right? I guess I should go more to that. Cash flow is the idea that there are monies that you have to pay out today. And there's money that's coming in today. And those monies may not bear any resemblance to each other. For example, the money that I'm going to have to pay out today, for example, is like shipping expenses from two days ago or three days ago. The money I'm gonna have to pay out today is money to our accountant, right? For January's banking, right? Well, for January's books, but that doesn't have anything to do with the money that's coming in today, Monday, or today, Thursday, or today, Friday, right? That, that doesn't have anything to do with those two things, right? Those day relationships to the money that has to be paid out those days are not the same monies. So if there's a mismatch, right? If you have to pay out $12,000 in a day and you only brought in $8,000 in revenue that day you're negative $4,000 in cash flow that's not a huge problem if you got a lot of money in the savings account or if you got a lot of money in your checking account but a lot of small businesses especially now during covid don't have a lot of money sitting around that problem gets especially worse when you realize that the money that you brought in today If you can't get at it today, it doesn't matter, right? You need to be able to have access to that cash flow, right? So the money's got to come in and the money's got to go out and there's got to be a very easy access to that money. And it can't sit in limbo for days. That's a huge problem if it sits in limbo for days, right? That's just, it's like the worst version of this possible. So this is something where we've got to figure out a solution that's going to work. And we've got to have that cash flow locked down because we don't have huge amounts of, money just sitting in the bank, as one I might imagine. And at the same time, we also have access to some capital. But whenever you borrow money, either against the line of credit or against credit cards, God forbid, um, that accrues interest. Now, credit cards aren't so bad because you have 30 days to pay. So from a cash flow standpoint, like you can say, okay, I'm going to put this $10,000 on the credit card and I'll pay it off in five days. And it's not like you accrued interest during that time. But it still it has its own issue because Putting too much on the credit card, expecting the cash flow to come through or to be able to, you know, banking that that cash is going to pay out. It, it's a risky game to play because you very seriously at, could get in a situation where the cash flow just suddenly doesn't materialize and now you owe them 20% on a very large bill. And so it's a bit of a gamble and I don't like doing it very often. I really don't. And I don't like the company having a lot of debt 
where actually the company has very little debt. Um, and I like to keep it that way because it's much easier to manage the company from a profitability standing, knowing that we don't have that much debt. And if we came to it where we were in an emergency, we probably could access debt relatively quickly and relatively easy with the current history we have dealing with debt. But then there's this other mitigating factor, and that is personal relationships. Because if anyone of you have tried to get money from a bank before, personal relationships are really key. Having that history and a person who you've worked with for years at a bank who's lent you money before and who understands your business and what you're doing and understands why you might need the capital this instant and you'll be able to pay it back shortly, but you know, you don't have time to wait. Those are assets that could almost be valued on the books. Like they're they're key parts of success. It's having that access and that knowledge and that personal relationship with someone. And I may have that sort of with one person from BMO back in my hometown, but it's not close. It's not like I have a personal, close personal relationship with them. And the person I have at Johnson is someone who I have called them on the phone and talked with them almost bi-weekly at this point. So I think my first step is this. The first step is to call that person and get their take on this problem. For all I know, there is a way for them to advance the capital and close that lag gap with just a press of a button. Right. For all I know, they have the ability to clear something in advance up to a certain dollar amount. And as long as that dollar amount's high enough, it shouldn't be a problem for now. So I got to talk with them first because to sever that connection and to essentially lose that asset of that person um, as a connection point is going to be a. I have to weigh that against the success and ease of using. Uh, the platform we've been using at BMO, right? Because that's really the 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 way. Do we weigh having someone we can talk to, someone we know personally, someone who knows our business and who's lent us a lot of money in the past and who's worked with us, but their system doesn't work that well for us on a day-to-day basis versus having a system that's worked very well for us on a day-to-day basis, but not having that personal relationship. And that personal relationship can be built, but it takes time. And so that's the other side of this. I mean, you know, maybe it's time for me to reach back out to that person in Janesville, who I know personally from BMO, not well, but I know, and maybe have them connect me personally with someone local and have build a relationship with that person at that new bank. And maybe that's not BMO. Maybe we go find an, a third party that we've never worked with before. That worries me because that seems like potentially the worst of both worlds, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep working on this. So what I would say to anyone who's starting out your business It's best if you set it up properly from the beginning, and it's very valuable to both research the banks that you want to use, and when you do find one you like, really work on building a personal relationship with someone at that bank, ideally a business banker, Um, as much as you can, connect with them regularly. Share your books with them. Give them product if you can. Not obviously as like any bribery. Avoid that like the plague, but just as like a, hey, I want you to have exposure to the product we make so that, you know, you understand it, right? So when we come and ask you for money, you understand that we're not, you know, selling snow to Eskimos. So having that connection is is key and really valuable. And I, that's what I would recommend. And I don't know how this is going to evolve. I'll keep you guys posted because ugh, this is the kind of stuff that it's like, People ask you, friends, I guess I should say, friends of, of mine ask, so what do you do with your day, right? Because I'm not making things in the workshop anymore, right? Not day to day, at least. We got a team for that. And I don't really necessarily do a lot of the product management side of things like the inventory management or the shipping because Merrill does that, right? So, you know, people ask, what do you do all day? It's like, this is what I do all day. I handle this kind of stuff. And there's just this kind of stuff just constantly comes up, right? There's I never understood how companies can have so much overhead until I ran a company and I realized how much, how much of business has very little to do with actually dealing with making product and shipping it out. It has so much more to do with all of the other parts of the business. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, be sure to check back in next Tuesday for our next topic. And don't forget to, check, forget to check that subscribe button below to be sure to get the latest podcast right away. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you can get notified when we post, post new podcasts. Um, We're going to try to keep up with it Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you don't see anything from the notifications, just check in, see if you can find it. Uh, It's always murdycreative.co and whatever you're listening on. If you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder, journal, folio, anything we sell, 
ask about our questions, uh, contact us on the main page of our website at murdycreative.co, or you can contact us via Instagram and Facebook. You can text, email, call, direct message. All the usuals, we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. We do appreciate your patience. Uh, Facebook and Instagram are a little bit of a slower way, or let me rephrase that. They're not always slower, but it's touch and go. It's not always that I'm able to keep track of our social media um, DMs and things like that. There's a lot of things that kind of go on during the day, so it's not like we have someone constantly watching our social media DMs. We do have someone watching the emails all the time. So we have one person who's nine to five who just does emails. So that's a more reliable way to get a hold of us. On the other hand, if you've got something that's like a quick question or you want to um, correct something, you just placed an order and you need to change something because for whatever reason, uh, you know, either you moved or you're moving, or you got your name wrong, or whatever the case might be, you can send us a, a, you can give us a phone call, or you can text message us at 414-434-9001. That's our customer service line. Uh, Melinda answers it. She's the one that's, you know, watches it. It's from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, uh, Monday through Friday. It's 414-434-9001. You can text us, call us. Uh, she does a great job. So uh, if you think you deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow our new community. So uh, word of mouth is the best for advertising. So tell your friends about the podcast, leave us a review on the podcast and whatever you're listening on, or you can leave us a review on the company slash the product. Uh, you can go to birdiecreative.co slash reviews to read all of our amazing reviews. There's also a button there that'll take you to where you can leave a review, which is facebook.com slash birdiecreative.co slash reviews. Uh, we use Facebook just because it's a third party so that you know that we're not just making these up, but you can leave a review there. We love them. We read them. We post them on the wall. They're a huge huge source of joy for us here. So we, we really do love them. If you've got something that would cause you to leave a bad review, there's also a button there to contact us. Please just give us the opportunity to fix it. We will. It means the world to me that you guys support us and it means a lot to take care of you for me. So we want to do our best to fix whatever the problem is. So whatever it is, reach out to us. We will, we will take care of you. I'm serious about that. It means a lot. If you want to tell your friends about the company, uh, you can do so. Just anytime you want, anywhere you want. But if you want to get a little something for it, go to the top of the web page, click log in, just type in your email and password. Uh, that'll create a profile for you. You can get 5% back on any purchase you make just as in-store credit. But you can also, in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a little button that says rewards. Click on that. That'll take you, you can scroll down there. That'll have a shareable link. If you share that link with your friends, they'll get $5 off their first purchase and you get $5 of in-store credit when they make that purchase. So it's a great way to share and uh, have a little something for it. Uh, if you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about, send them my way. I'm always looking for something to talk about. It's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and I'm not 100% sure what's always interesting or not. So definitely reach out to us. You can leave us a comment below on the video here, or you can send us an email, sales at murdycreative.co, uh, and we'll be happy to, to I'll talk about it I, if I can. I love it. It's great. Uh, if you're looking for multiple binders, journals, folios, anything we sell, um, for gifts, giveaways, menus, anything like that, uh, ask about our bulk discounts. Minimum order quantity for our bulk discounts is five, and that can be five of one thing or one of five things. It's just based off of the cart total quantity, so you can mix and match all you like. If you're looking for a custom order, like a custom engraved item, I should say, uh, we don't have any minimum order quantities on that. You can just get one if you want. It's just a flat fee, and uh, it's great. So you send that logo or design to sales at merdicreative.co with the image itself in the high resolution as best you can, black and white, and uh, include what products you're interested in or anything like that, quantities if you've got multiples, and uh, we'll be able to create a custom order link for you as well as a mock-up for you to review. And if you're going to get more than five of those, they qualify for the bulk discount. So definitely reach out about that as well at the same time, and we'll be able to set you up with that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day, and goodbye.